Hey there crew, Brandon here. If you follow me in other social media, you might know that I've been talking a lot about how YouTube is this huge opportunity for indie RPGs that's sitting there untapped. While some videos do exist on YouTube that come from the indie RPG community, they're more often than not long actual plays that are more likely to appeal to people that are already in the industry than to people that are outside. YouTube is essentially this huge group that everybody in the world is a part of and everybody can be accessed at. And I've been having these thoughts because with the death of Google Plus, we've had a lot of movement towards smaller communities, people forming up in these little forums in order to have good places for discussion. Now, I'm a member of a couple of the forums, and I actually have been really enjoying several of them, but don't think that they're as efficient of a way to reach out and add more people to the community as Google Plus was. And that's why I want to really challenge people to try out YouTube. I've been getting some really fair and really good-natured pushback from a lot of people for a lot of really good reasons. On YouTube, it's tough to build an audience, especially when there isn't already a community there. Monetization is really tough. You have to get a thousand subscribers, and frankly, that's not going to happen for most of us anytime soon. YouTube can pull monetization in really awful ways, like they have for a lot of queer videos. All of those are really legitimate reasons to not want to get involved with YouTube. But the biggest question that I get from people is how you get over the barrier of entry to YouTube. Now, that kind of blows my mind. That's wild to me in an industry with so many podcasts. I am a podcaster myself on Stop, Hack, and Roll and Protean City Comic, as well as having guested on a whole bunch of different ones. I have my podcast set up, which is why you might notice my little microphone right there, and I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it. That said, I don't handle any of the technological side of it because it's all way above me. Without my podcast partner, James Malloy, who does enormous, incredible work on both of our shows, I couldn't do it. I just, I literally couldn't. I think that the only way to think that YouTube has a higher barrier of entry than podcasts is to not really understand how easy it is to get onto YouTube. So in this video, I want to share how easy it is and just kind of bring you through each of the steps that I do and the steps that you could do to start your own YouTube channel. YouTube is a different animal from podcasts and from blogging, but it's not one that's impossible for people to get involved in. And I actually think it's got one of the lowest barriers to entry. So let's jump in. Okay, so this is my front facing phone camera. I've got an LG G5, which came out in 2016. So I'm sure a lot of people have better cameras than I do, but it seems like this one is actually pretty functional. Now, in terms of composition, I'm keeping my head centered on the horizontal and up towards the top of the frame, which is just kind of the YouTube vlogger look. I'm not 100% sure why everybody does that, but it seems to work pretty nicely. I kind of like how it just looks compositionally. Honestly, I think that this is a video format that works. It isn't going to have as high quality of sound as another camera might, but I'll admit my phone's uh, speaker is possibly broken. A lot of things in my phone are broken. But as long as you're really keeping your eyes on that camera, talking confidently, going straight ahead, then you can get some pretty decent content. In the background, you can probably hear Pippin. He's knocking around some stuff. But for the sake of this video, I'm trying to make it kind of as raw as I can. I'm doing a couple little cuts, but apart from that, it's going to be as straight through as I possibly can just to show how it can be done. When you are doing your videos, don't be afraid to take multiple takes. Usually when I'm doing videos, I try to take multiple takes if I'm not really hitting a line quite right. Generally, I'll stop the recording and start it over just because I find it easier to do that than to really get a lot of editing into any one single clip. It's also super a matter of preference. I like getting kind of the choppy cut up video format that kind of beauty vloggers and some other folks tend to use. Uh, it works well for me. It's not necessarily for everybody. Uh, in terms of how I'm getting the lighting to be as good as it is, because I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how I'm looking right now. Maybe without the glasses could be a little bit better just because I'm getting some reflection. I have the light more or less behind my phone. Uh, that tends to give better visuals. Um, I, I think I can see that my gaze on the camera is a little bit off just because I'm used to doing my camera directly in front of me and it's a little bit to the side because it's a phone. Uh, that said, I think it's totally serviceable. If I had some really good points to make about tabletop RPGs right now, I could do that. And to be honest, this was super easy. I'm kind of thinking that I might try to do a little bit of like a weekend review by grabbing little bits of video footage during the week as I think of stuff. 
I think it might be a fun way to add a little bit more content. But let's say that you don't have really good light in your house or you would rather be sitting at your computer or you just don't want to hold up your phone because I'll admit my arm's getting tired even just these couple little minutes of recording this. Well, I'm gonna hop over to my normal setup and kind of bring you through what I do there. Okay, let's say you've done a couple of videos, you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying doing mine and you wanna do some upgrading. This is the setup that I use for my videos. I think that it does a really good job and I think that it doesn't distract people from watching the video. And I love how this setup makes my eyes just look like big and vibrant. It's really working for me at least. The way I've done this is with a $20 beauty light that sits just behind my camera. I have a Logitech C920, which is a $65 camera, um, which is definitely not nothing. If you also already have recording equipment, then that's amazing, but if you are thinking of making a podcast anyway, you'd also have to pay for the mic for that. My mic is a Blue Yeti, which is a little more expensive because I got it for podcasting. Um, it runs a hundred bucks normally. I got it for $65 during one of those big Amazon sale things. But let's look at just the video equipment, the beauty light and the camera. That's running you $85. That's not nothing. That's an enormous amount of money for a lot of people, honestly, including myself. This was kind of a big decision that I jumped into and I'm really happy that I did. But what's really nice about YouTube is it doesn't have recurring costs. I've bought this and as long as nothing breaks, I'm paid. There's no question of how much I have to pay for hosting or for a website or anything like that. You can get different services if you want to like really track your stats on YouTube. I don't do that and I think it's going fine for me because what I want to do isn't build a uh, YouTube Empire, but have some fun making some videos. By the time you've gone through a year of website and hosting for your podcast, you've already paid for your camera and light. So if the camera and light last more than a year, you're you're coming up ahead. Um, I also happen to have a little desk light over here that I use. I think it adds a little bit. Honestly, that's just getting the room to have a little bit of light in it. And as I was saying with the phone time, if you have a window back here, no need for a light as long as you're recording during the day. Uh, natural light is amazing and like exactly what beauty lights are trying to imitate. Now there's still editing. Editing takes a little bit of time, just like it does in podcasts. But with videos, you're more likely to be doing just one video. What's really nice about that is that there aren't people talking over each other. There aren't spaces that you're cutting out from one person's audio, but not someone else's. And so when you're looking at the audio wavelength, it can give you a really good idea of what gets cut right away. If there's no one talking, it's probably no content. If you're doing this kind of look at the camera and vlog style video. If you're not and you're doing like a four cam thing, that's an entirely different beast. But that's a little abnormal for YouTube. And like the APs that are all over the place tend to just not be edited. But also people from outside of the community aren't sitting down and watching a four hour AP. People in the community are. So if we're trying to reach new audiences, then these shorter 10 minute, five minute, 15 minute videos can do exactly that. I use the default software from my Logitech that just kind of came with downloading the drivers and it seems to do me fine. It needs maybe some adjustments. I'm not 100% pleased with how my audio is coming through, but that's kind of just the process of getting better and taking time. I, I mess with it a little bit in my editing software as well to kind of hopefully make myself sound a little bit closer to how I sound on my podcasts. Some people record their audio at the same time that they record their video using a different program and then layer the two together. I'll be honest, that's just not a step that I'm willing to take yet because it's like an extra couple minutes and I don't feel like doing that. The program that I use to edit everything is Lightworks. It is a free software. I have a Windows computer. I just kind of found it and downloaded it and it's pretty easy to use. You tell it what files you want to edit, you stick the files together, and it does its thing. It has options for video effects of some kinds. I don't use them because that's just not the kind of video that I'm making. At some point I want to learn how to put like the little box right over here that has my name or something. I'm sure that it's possible and I'm sure it's not difficult. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, when I do that, maybe I'll throw up a little bonus video for it. But honestly, 
that's the whole thing. The first time I sat down and recorded one of these videos, it took me like 45 minutes of recording because I really wasn't feeling confident. I was feeling really weird and out of place. And like when I said the really YouTube style lines, I was uh, kind of mortified at myself. Um, the amount of takes that I took of, hey there crew and hey there fam and hey what's up and hey guys and a thousand other variants of that is really embarrassing. But at this point with a little bit more experience, just a couple of weeks, I'm able to more confidently just look at the camera and record because it's fun and there's some people listening to it and watching it and enjoying it and so it's good enough. There's only two last things that I do to keep my videos YouTube quality. One is I have a pre-written description of basically what's going on that has all of my links to my various social media. I also think it's really important to have dynamic interesting thumbnails. My videos that have better thumbnails seem to actually get more hits which is really surprising to me because my assumption is that people are just watching because they already know me. For those I take a couple of photos just using my standard webcam and I use a website called uh, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A. It's a free site and it has a preset for making YouTube size thumbnails and you're able to put all the text and nonsense and shapes and everything you want for that. YouTube really likes a nice big picture of your face. So like closer up probably in this sort of range and it likes big text that's like nice and vibrant. Uh, so toss that on there and that can be a surefire way to get a couple more hits. There's definitely more that can be said about making YouTube videos. I'm not trying to make something exhaustive. I'm just trying to get you started. And this is enough to get you started because it's what I'm currently doing, like start to finish. I took a little bit of time to learn how to do the editing, but honestly, it's not that tough. You just select the sections you don't want and delete them and then they come together. Once you've got this video, it's there on your channel. And what's really nice is that it lasts forever. I literally five minutes ago got a message that someone was talking about one of my older masks videos and I was able to link it and go like, hey, here's content. I don't need to say what I want to say again or link to a different forum or something like that. My thoughts are there and available and shareable, which is something I really love. It's nice being able to have something that people can come back to and still find valuable, even when a couple weeks have gone by. I'm sure that some of my content is going to start to look a little bit less up to par as I get better at doing this, but the thoughts and ideas in it are still valuable, and having an opportunity to share those with people makes me really happy. From the here, it's the exact same marketing consistency and hustle that you look for in a podcast. People prefer their media to come out on a regular basis. People prefer their media to come out. People prefer to be able to count on that. People don't like really long hiatuses without explanations but that would be true of your podcast also. And then you just hop on your social media and you talk about it. There's no reason not to brag. You've made something cool. It's amazing for people to be able to go grab that. The last thing I want to touch on super, super quick is that YouTube thrives on making connections. If you can have connections with other YouTubers in our little indie RPG space, that's going to be something that will help you out. I'm hoping moving forward as I talk about more general RPG stuff to be able to link to other awesome videos. Uh, but I will make one recommendation right now. Kevin Petker is doing some fantastic videos and you can get them right here. Kevin is one of my very favorite game designers and just has an understanding of Powered by the Apocalypse that sometimes blows my dang mind. And and the videos are coming out really nicely as well. And so what's just happened there is YouTube has connected these two channels now and the algorithms will help to make more suggestions of Kevin's channel to my channel and my channel to Kevin's channel. And that's how we build a community. This could be amazing and huge. We just need more people to do it. If you think you can be an awesome creative voice in tabletop RPGs, but you've been held back, this is a chance to do it. If a 15 year old with a cell phone can get millions of views, we can make a community that works. There is no barrier to entry, except for our own willingness to kind of look at ourselves and say cheesy YouTube things. Cheesy YouTube things like, if you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have thoughts on barrier to entry or have other questions about how to get into YouTube for as a tabletop designer, GM, player, whatever, hit me up in the comments below. Likes, subscriptions, comments, all of those things are amazing for the channel. And if you really like YouTube phrases, don't forget to ring that bell.
then you'll get notifications. I've got notifications on several of my friends here. It's way less annoying seeing the notification from YouTube pop up when it's like, oh, my dear friend and buddy. I'm really excited about what the tabletop industry could bring to YouTube. I think it's got some amazing possibilities and I think that there's a ton of incredible design work that can be done in these kinds of dialogues. So let me know if you start doing this because I want to subscribe to you. I want to follow you and I want to see the incredible things you do. So until next time, keep being a force for good in a world that hates and fears you. Bye folks.